Imagine being on a flight to America. The plane is moving at an incredible speed just to get you to the destination in a few hours. When it takes off, it is in motion. In air, it is in motion. And now, because you are inside the plane, you are also in motion. Motion does seem very fascinating. Do you want to learn more about it? Hop on board then. Guess what? You hopping on board is motion too. Birds fly, fish swim, blood flows through veins and arteries, cars move, you jump over gates and walls when you reach home late, the earth spins on its axis, atoms, molecules, planets, stars, galaxies, they are all in motion. Now when you move around, you can move in different directions and in different ways. This is because there are different types of motion. Like when an object moves along a straight line, the motion of the object is called rectilinear motion. For example, the motion of a vehicle along a straight empty road, or an arrow being shot from the bow and moving straight ahead to hit the target, or a bowling ball rolling in a straight line towards the pins, and so on. Even circular motion is a type of motion that you see in your everyday life. The hands of the clock, the fan rotating to give you cool air, and the washing machine going round and round to clean your clothes. And what about a mosquito buzzing around your head and annoying you when you're trying to study? Well, even that little fellow is in a kind of motion that's called random motion. We've talked about motion and position for so long, but do you know that there are two very important terms in physics that help us understand the motion of objects? They are called distance and displacement. I know they sound familiar because we all use these words in our everyday lives casually and often interchange them. But now you'll see how these two words actually have quite different meanings. Let's understand this with an example. Say the point at which I'm standing right now is the reference point or my origin. Now, I start moving towards the right as you see it and walk till I've covered four units. Now, I've traveled a distance of four units and my displacement is four units to the right. I'm sure you're wondering how distance and displacement are different when clearly we're getting the same values for them. Well, very soon, you'll find out. Turns out, I don't really like being at this position. So, I've decided to walk back to the origin. Okay, so here I am, back to where I started from. Now, what is the total distance that I've traveled since I started walking? Let's calculate it. First, it was four units in this direction and then four more units back to get back to where I am. Adding four and four, we get eight units as the distance. And what about displacement? Since I'm back to the origin, to the point where I started from, my displacement is zero. This is because when we define distance, we say that when a body moves from one point to another, the distance traveled by it is the actual length of the path taken by it, irrespective of the direction in which it has traveled. But on the other hand, when we define displacement, we say that displacement is equal to the shortest distance in a straight line between the initial and final positions of the body. Well, this was just me moving left and right on the screen. But to better understand these two very important quantities, let's take another interesting example. Say, this is where your house is, and that is where your school is located. Now, if you want to go to school on your bicycle, you'll have to take this road around the park, which means you'll have to first cycle four kilometers towards the east, and then three kilometers to the north. Your friend staying in the same building as yours instead walks through the park for 5 kilometers to reach school. Now when you reach school, your teacher asks you for what distance you had to cycle to reach school. 
To answer this, you will do a quick calculation in your mind and think it was 4 kilometers and then 3 kilometers which makes it 4 plus 3 that is 7 kilometers. So you tell her it was 7 kilometers. Then she asks your friend how far the school is from his house and he instantly replies that it's 5 kilometers. Your initial and final positions are the same that is the building and the school respectively. But you had to take the road while your friend took the shortest path. So you travelled the distance of 7 kilometers while your friend who took the shortest path only travelled 5 kilometers. Here the distance between the building and the school is 7 kilometers for you but the displacement is just 5 kilometers in the northeast direction. Now that you've understood the difference between distance and displacement and how they're calculated, let's try a hand at solving a few numericals based on this concept. Consider an athlete who is jogging around a circular path that has a radius of 70 meters, but he doesn't cover the entire path and stops halfway. Now, using this information, we have to find the distance traveled by the athlete and his displacement. Now we know that the distance travelled by the athlete will be nothing but the actual length of the path travelled by him. Let's draw the circular path as shown and say the athlete travelled from point A to point B. We know that he has only jogged along half the circular path. So the distance covered by him will be half the circumference of the circular path. The circumference of the circular path is given as 2 pi r, where we know the value of pi as 22 by 7 and r is equal to 70 meters. So we can calculate the distance traveled as 1 by 2 into 2 into pi into r. Substituting the values of pi and r, we get the distance as 1 by 2 into 2 into 22 by 7 into 70 meters. Calculating this we get the distance as 220 meters. Next, as we know the displacement of the athlete is going to be the shortest distance between his initial point A and his final point B. If you observe the figure you can conclude that this is nothing but the diameter of the circular path. The diameter of a circular path is equal to twice its radius. So we get the displacement as 2 into r which is 2 into 70 meters giving us 140 meters. So we get the distance travelled by the athlete as 220 meters while his displacement is 140 meters. That was fairly simple looking at a circular path wasn't it? Let's see if we are able to solve a little tricky question with a zigzag path. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.